There is none holy as the Lord. There is none beside thee. Neither is there any rock like our God. There is none holy as the Lord, holy as the Lord. There is none holy as the Lord, as the Lord. There is none beside thee, beside thee, neither is there any rock like our God. There is none holy as the Lord, holy as the Lord. There is none holy as the Lord, as the Lord. There is none beside thee, beside thee, neither is there any rock like our God. There is none holy as the Lord. Our Father, our God, our King, the Holy One of Israel, the Most High, the Almighty, the All-Sufficient God, we worship you. We give you all glory, we give you all honor, and we ask that you please accept our worship in Jesus' name. Father, we are praying that today you will send your word and your word will heal your people and will set the captives free. We pray, Lord God Almighty, that by the time this service is over, several people all over the world will have major testimonies. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. Well, I waved to one or two people and said, Good day, God bless you. And then you may be seated in case you are standing. As we continue with our series on going higher, we move now to part 27, going higher, part 27. And our text will be First Kings chapter 18, from verse 25 to 29. First Kings chapter 18, from verse 25 to 29. And Elijah said unto the prophets of Baal, Choose you one bullock for yourselves, and dress it first, for ye are many, and call on the name of your gods. Put no fire on there. And they took the bullock, which was given them, and they dressed it, and called on the name of Baal from morning even until noon, saying, O Baal, hear us. But there was no voice, nor any that answered. And they leaped upon the altar which was made. And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud. For he is a God. Either he's talking, or he is pursuing, or is in a journey, or peradventure he sleepeth and must be awaked. And they cried aloud and called themselves after their manner with knives and lances 
till the blood gushed out upon them. And it came to pass, when midday was past, and they prophesied until the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that there was neither voice, nor any to answer, nor any that regarded. If you want to put a soft title to today's uh, message, you probably want to call it Mocking the Devil. In Psalm 115 from verse 3 to 8, Psalm 115 from verse 3 to 8, the Bible says our God is in the heavens. He does as he pleases. But idols are dumb. They have mouth, they can speak. They have ears, they can hear. They have eyes, they cannot see. Our God is sovereign. But idols, useless. In Daniel chapter 11, verse 32, therefore, Daniel 11, verse 32, the Bible says, if you know your God, you can do exploits. If you know the God you serve, you can do exploits. James chapter 4, verse 7, James 4, verse 7, made it clear, if you are truly submissive to God, you can resist the devil and he will flee from you. We serve a God who can hear prayers. Psalm 65 verse 2. Psalm 65 verse 2 says, O ye that hears prayers, unto ye shall all flesh come. Not only can he hear, he can also answer. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. He says, if you call on me, I will answer you. So I want to begin this message by praying for every one of you listening to me that all your prayers will be answered today in Jesus' name. Amen. But then, here, Elijah tried to show the difference between the living God and idols. He told the prophets of Baal, he said, maybe the reason your God is not answering you is that he's busy talking. He's talking. That's why he's not hearing you. Now we know our God does talk. But our God is not a talkative. We need to note that. Psalm 62 verse 11. Psalm 62 verse 11 says, God has spoken once. And twice have I heard this. That power belongs to God. Our God does not have to speak more than once to get anything done. Let there be light and there was light. That's it. He does not have to repeat himself. He's not a talkative. If for any reason whatsoever he repeats himself, he is saying, hey, pay attention. Like in John chapter 3, verse 3, John chapter 3, verse 3, he said to that man, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a man be born again, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. In John chapter 14, verse 12, John 14, verse 12, he said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth in me, the works I did, shall he do also. He said, Pay attention to what I'm saying. 
when God repeats himself three times, the situation must be serious. Like in Joshua chapter 1, from verse 1 to 8. Joshua 1, from verse 1 to 8. Three times God said to Joshua, Be strong and of good courage. Second time, be strong and of good courage. When he said it the third time, you can get, you can feel a hint of anger in his voice. I say, only be strong and of good courage. Have I not commanded thee? Now, he was talking to a messenger that he wanted to promote overnight to become a head of state. So you can understand poor Joshua trembling. How can I take over from Moses? I, I mean, I knew Moses. I was very close to him. You appeared to him in a bush of fire. For the past 40 years, he had been leading these people, and the, these people that he was leading, they were so stubborn. They, they, they made sure he didn't get to the promised land. And now you are asking me, a servant, to take over? Poor boy was trembling. Three times, God had to say, be strong and of a good courage. But there's something interesting here that I believe you should take note of. And that is four times in the Bible, God repeated himself over a particular issue. I think you should know that that issue must be critical Four times. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4. Habakkuk 2, verse 4. Romans 1, 17. Romans 1, 17. Galatians 3, verse 11. Galatians 3, verse 11. And Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. Hebrews 10, verse 38. What was God saying? Four times. The just shall live by faith. Four times. God, who is not a talkative, repeated himself, saying again and again and again and again the just shall live by faith. That tells you the importance of faith in the life of a Christian. Why? That emphasis, because you are going higher, so you need to know. It. Because it is written, Hebrews 11 verse 6, Hebrews 11 verse 6, Without faith, it is impossible to please God. So God is saying, hey, <laughs> you want to please me? You better be a man or woman of faith. In Romans chapter 14, verse 23, Romans 14, verse 23, it is also written, whatever is not of faith, is sin. Meaning what? You have no faith. You are a sinner. It doesn't matter what title you bear. And you can be sure no sinner is going to heaven. And so God, who is not a talkative, insisted you must live by faith. Now, there's something else about the fact that God is not a talkative, which means those of us who are his children, 
should not be talkative because the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 10, verse 19, Proverbs 10, verse 19, the Bible says, out of multitude of words, you can't avoid sin. If you are a talkative, you are bound to sin. You are bound to say something that should not be said. And then Proverbs 29 verse 11. Proverbs 29 verse 11 tells us that a fool utters all that is in his mind. But a wise person keeps some of it back. Meaning what? If you are a talkative, the Bible calls you a fool. And the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. So being a talkative is a very terrible thing. So as a true Christian, true child of God, from now on, watch your mouth. So, our God answers prayers, but it's not a talkative. Number two, Elijah said to the prophet of Bia, he said, maybe your God is pursuing. Our God does not pursue. There's a major difference between God <laughs> and idols. God does not pursue. Why? Because he's everywhere at all times. Psalm 139 from verse 7 to 10. Psalm 139 from verse 7 to 10. <laughs> if you go to the bottom of the ocean, it's there. You go to the higher heavens, it's there. So he doesn't have to pursue anybody to catch him. Anywhere you say you go to, <laughs> God is there waiting for you. I mean, remember the story of Jonah. God told Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh. In Jonah chapter 1, you can read the whole story from verse 1 to 17. Jonah 1, from verse 1 to 17. God told Jonah, I want you to go to Nineveh to go and preach to the people there. He said, no, I'm not going here. I will run away. And he, he, he turned in the opposite direction and began to go to Tashis. <laughs> and funny enough, he decided to go by sea. And God was waiting for him there. The one who made the sea, who made the wind, said, oh, okay, I asked you to go to Nineveh. You think you are clever, you are running. He sent a storm. And until they threw him overboard, the storm didn't cease. And if he was thinking, well, oh, that's fine, at least I will still not deliver the message. God said, ah. <laughs> I'm ready for you at the bottom of the ocean. I'm there. I have a messenger there waiting to swallow you up. God told the whale to swallow him up and told the whale, this is for keeping, not for eating. By the time Jonah came to his senses and said, God, I cry to you from the bottom of the ocean. And God said, fine, no problem. Well, go and vomit him. Don't vomit him into the ocean. He doesn't know how to swim. Take him to dry land. Do you think you can run from God? You want to run how? By land? Read your Bible. In Numbers chapter 16, from verse 28 to 33. Number 16, 28 to 33. There were some people who thought they, 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 they are clever and they wanted to gang up against the servant of God. God told the ground to swallow them up. You want to run away by land? He can ask the ground to open up and just swallow you. Or you say, I will run away by air. <laughs> Maybe if you read Joshua chapter 10, verse 11. Joshua 10, verse 11. 
The Bible will tell you when some enemies were trying to run away from God, God bombarded them with hailstone. God is the first one to throw a bomb. So you can't run away from him by land. You can't run away from him by sea. You can't run away from him by air. If you are wise, you will surrender. Because he doesn't have to pursue you to catch up with you. And he doesn't have to go hunting. Because the word pursuing there could also mean hunting. Looking for animals to, to eat. Psalm 50 from verse 10 to 12. Psalm 50 from verse 10 to 12 tells us that they catch you upon a thousand hills. They belong to God. That's why he said, if I'm hungry, I won't even tell you. You know, there's a story in John chapter 21 from verse 1 to 13. John 21 from verse 1 to 13. Very, very interesting story. I, I, I wish you would read it again. It happened after Jesus rose from the dead. And uh, Peter said, I go fishing. <clears throat> and his friend said, we will go with you. And they fished all night and they caught nothing. And Jesus appeared to them in the morning and said, hey, have you caught anything? They said, nothing. And I said, okay, come, come and dine. The Bible said by the time they landed, they saw that Jesus was already cooking fish. You know, nobody asked him, how did you catch your fish? <laughs> he doesn't have to use nets to catch a fish. All he has to do is tell fish, jump on board. He doesn't have to go a hunting. Our God doesn't pursue. He doesn't go a hunting. You know, one interesting thing about that is this. If God ever asks you to give him something, he's doing you an honor. Because he doesn't need anything from you. Whatever he wants, he can, he can bring from anywhere. And you know, the Bible scholar said that when Jesus Christ said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. He is saying, according to Bible scholars, if you ask for something that I never created, I will create it for you. That's our God. Now then, Elijah now went further and said, maybe your God traveled. Maybe that's why he hasn't answered you. Cry a little louder, so maybe he will return from his journey. Our own God does not travel. And I like that a lot. You see, because according to Isaiah 66 verse 1, Isaiah 66 verse 1, the Bible says, he sits down on his throne in heaven and his legs rest on the earth. From his throne, he is in absolute control of everything that is happening. When you say traveling, where is God going to travel to? From where to where? As a matter of fact, the Bible says he's sitting down there on his throne and his eyes are running to and fro throughout the whole earth. Second Chronicles chapter 16, verse 9. 2 Chronicles 16, verse 9. His eyes are running to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those who fear him. He never needed to travel. If he has to get a message across, he will send his word. Psalm 107. Verse 20. Psalm 107, verse 20 says, He sent his word and he healed them and delivered them from their destruction. He sits on his throne and he says, Hey, that fellow be healed. That fellow be delivered. And instantly, 
April happened. And I'm representing him today as I say to you, in the name that's above every other name, any one of you sick, be healed in Jesus' name. Yeah. Every one of you be within the reach of my voice. Every form of yoke in your life, I decree that be broken right now in Jesus' name. So he speaks to heal. He speaks to deliver without leaving his throne. And he can guide. You need counsel. You need advice. You don't know what to do next. He doesn't have to travel. All he needs to do is speak. First Kings chapter 2, from verse 2 to 16. First Kings 17, from verse 2 to 16. When he wanted to guide Elijah, so what to do next? He said, go to Cherith. When the river there dried up, he said, go to the widow of Zarephath. He can guide simply by sitting on his throne and sending his word. And then Elijah said, Maybe your God is asleep. Maybe you need to wake him up. You know, one of the most beautiful things about God is that he never sleeps. He never slumbers. Psalm 121, verse 3 to 4. Psalm 121, verse 3 to 4. He neither sleeps nor slumbers. Why? Because he's never tired. Isaiah chapter 40, from verse 28 to 29. Isaiah 40, 28 to 29. While he's applying strength to everybody else, he himself is never, never tired. So when you cry unto him and he appears as if maybe he's not hearing, or maybe he's sleeping. <laughs> Even when he pretends to be sleeping, he's still in control. Mark chapter 4, from verse 35 to 41. Mark 4, 35 to 41. The Bible says when he was in a boat, and there was a storm, and he appears to be sleeping, and the disciples say, hey, Master, carry it not doubt that we perish. <laughs> you got up and said, what kind of rubbish is that? Uh, you peace, be, you see, be still. And immediately there was calm. I pray that we we'll hear from God today. Amen. That His word will heal you, Amen. His word will bring you deliverance, Amen. His word will guide you, Amen. and His word will bring peace to your storms. Amen. The conclusion is simple. We have a God. He hears prayers. He can answer, and he is promised to answer. We have a God who doesn't go a hunting, a God who doesn't travel, a God who doesn't sleep, a God who is not a talkative, who is not so busy talking that he can't hear you. The conclusion is in Psalm 46, verse 1. Psalm 46, verse 1. He said, God is the ever-present help in time of trouble. You are serving a God who is ever ready to help. It doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter the time of day or night. You have a God who is on call 24-7. Any time you call on him, he is ready to answer you. I remember years ago, first time I had to visit a head of state outside Nigeria. And I saw how many doors I have to pass through at his invitation. It was the one who asked me to come. Security check one, security check two, security check three, 
security check four. And then I got to where they call reception. <laughs> and then finally they came to collect me and then we have to go through two other security checks before we finally got to see I said, oh God, thank God it's so easy to see Jesus. Anytime I want to see my master, my king, my commander-in-chief, as soon as I say in the name of Jesus, I'm in his presence. What a joy being a child of God. Which is why before we pray today, I want to <laughs> encourage you again if you are still toying with the issue of salvation, hey, make up your mind. If you are trusting one idol or the other, you are trusting one fake prophet or the other, hey, 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 change your mind. Give your life to Jesus Christ today. is the only sure, ever-present help in the time of trouble. Is the one you can call upon anytime, anywhere, and he will answer you. So if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, wherever you are, bow your head and cry out to him. Ask him to save your soul. Ask him to receive you into his family so that from now on, whenever you need help, you call and the answer will come. Let us pray. Ancient of days, the one who is everywhere at all times, the ever-living God, the one who neither sleeps nor slumbers, I thank you for your word today, and I thank you for those who are surrendering their lives to you this moment. Father, please receive them, save their souls, let your blood wash away their sins. Write their names in the book of life. And from now on, my Father and my God, any time they call on you, please answer them by fire. Amen. And those of us who are already your children, and we need help in one form or the other today, please, as we cry unto you, answer us speedily Amen. and take all the glory for it. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord.